In this video, we are going to talk about adders. No measurement is exact. Every measurement has some uncertainty, which we call adders. For example, if we measure the length of this pen, then we can write the length as 10 centimeters. But this may not be the exact length of the pen. It may have some plus minus value. 10 centimeter plus minus 0.1 centimeter say. So this is errors. This uncertainty we call errors. Now errors can be of two types. First type is systematic errors. Cause of these errors are known to us. The first kind of systematic errors is erroneous instrument. You know that the instrument is defective. You bought a scale from China, right? And that scale is defective. So you measure some length. That will not be correct. So that is erroneous instrument. Some instruments have got zero errors. Even when nothing is there, they don't give zero reading. So that is also an erroneous instrument. The next systematic error is due to changes in temperature, pressure, humidity, etc. You buy a perfect scale in London, a perfect steel scale that is guaranteed to be accurate. And now you bring it to Mumbai and measure something. You not get the correct reading. Why? Mumbai is hot, hotter than London, much hotter. The scale will expand. And the readings will be wrong. The third kind of systematic error is when we neglect certain effects like air resistance. Now these systematic errors we can correct by using appropriate corrections. So if you use the formula for thermal expansion, you can correct the reading on the scale. So this is how we correct systematic errors. Second kind of errors are random errors. You measure your height at five different places and you get different readings. The readings should have been same, but they are different. We don't know why they are different. You measure the time period of a simple pendulum. Do the experiment ten times. You get ten different readings. These are random errors. These are because of constraints of human beings. We don't know why they are there, but they are there, these errors, random errors. So how do we take care of these errors? To minimize these random errors, we take a number of readings and then find the mean value of these readings. That is how we minimize random errors. The first thing we need to learn is mean value. The first thing we need to learn is mean value. Suppose you take 5 readings, then the mean value will be A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4 plus A5 by 5. Simple, finding average, mean and average, same thing. So this mean value will be better than each of these readings, right? Now every reading has got some error, right? That we call it absolute error. What is absolute error? Absolute error in reading 1 will be mean value minus the first reading. This is the reading error in reading 1, right? We expect, we feel that the mean value is a better value than the reading. So, the reading should have been mean. Obviously, got A1. So, this is the absolute error in reading 1. The absolute error in reading 2 will be mean value minus the second reading. Simple. Same thing. Absolute error in reading 3 will be AM minus A3 and so on. So we can get 
the absolute error in each reading. Right? Now, some people do not write the plus and minus sign with these absolute errors. We are going to write the plus and minus sign because many people do that. Now, once we have got the absolute error in each reading, we want to find mean absolute error. So, what is mean absolute error? Let us call that delta A mean. This will be sum of the modulus of these absolute errors. All these errors, absolute errors, you add up. And you divide it by the number of readings. This is called mean absolute error. Remember, errors are always added. Errors are never subtracted. Okay, if you do two mistakes, both the mistakes will add up. They will never get subtracted. Errors are always added. So, that is why you take the modulus of these absolute errors to find the mean absolute error. Once you have got the mean absolute error, we can write the final result. We can say that A is equal to the mean value plus minus this mean absolute error. So, this is what is the reading and that is how it is expressed. Now, if you divide this mean absolute error by the mean value, we get fractional error. Fractional error, if you don't like the name, no problem, we can call it relative error. Fractional error or relative error are defined as the mean absolute error divided by the mean value. This is called fractional error. Right? What will be percentage error? You multiply this by 100. That is all. Percentage means multiply by 100. So, you multiply fractional error or relative error by 100, we get percentage error. Now, let us look at a question to understand all these things. Mean value, absolute error, mean absolute error, how to express the final result and then find the percentage error and fractional error. Now, let us take a numerical problem to understand these concepts. Suppose, we measure the diameter of a cable by screw gauge or some other instrument and we get these five readings, 2.620 centimeter, 2.625 centimeter, 2.630 centimeter, 2.628 centimeter and 2.626 centimeter. So, one cable you have taken, you have measured it five times, you got five different readings. So, now what is the mean value? Mean value is very simple. You add up all these numbers, you will get 13.129 centimeter. And we divide it by the number of readings, we get the mean value. So, how much do we get? Mean value. Mean value will come out to be 2.6 258 this much. Now, our reading is accurate up to only 3 decimal places. So, we cannot go to so much decimal places. So, we will say the diameter of the cable mean value is 2.626 centimeter. Remember the rules for rounding off? Right. Good. So, now we have got the mean value. Once we have got the mean value, we can find the error in each reading. The error in each reading is this minus this. So, error in reading 1 will be equal to how much? 2.626 minus 2.620. That is plus 0 0.006. This is the error in reading 1. What is the error in reading 2? This average value minus the reading. So, we get plus 0 0.001. What is the reading in the third reading? 
Again, the mean value minus the reading. So we get minus 0 0.004. Third reading. Done. Fourth reading. The error is minus 0 0.002. Right. What is the error in the last reading? Not 0. Because we have to express the result as 3 decimal places. Right? Remember significant digits? So don't say delta A5 is 0. Delta A5 is 0 0.000. So now we have got the errors in each reading the absolute error in each reading. Now what we have to do find, to find the mean absolute error? The first thing, we look only at the modulus. Don't look at the sign. Don't worry about this minus sign. Errors are always added. Errors are never subtracted. So don't start adding these two and then subtracting these two. Just add all of them. So what I get? 6 plus 1,7 plus 4,11 plus 2,13. So the mean absolute error becomes 0 0.013. That is the sum of all this without bothering about plus and minus sign. And how many readings are there? 5. So we get the mean absolute error as 0 0.0026. We can order it after 3 decimal places. And this will become 0 0.003 centimeter. So this is the mean absolute error. How do we write the reading? Reading will write it as A equal to A mean plus the mean absolute error. So mean value is how much? 2.626. And what is the error? Plus minus 0 0.003. So this is how we will write the result. Suppose we need fractional error. What is fractional error? It is the mean absolute error by the mean value. So mean absolute error we are calling it delta m and mean value is m. So what is delta m? 0 0.003 and what is the mean value? 2.626. So this if we calculate, we get 0 0.001. This error can be either plus or minus. So you have a plus minus sign and that is the fractional error or relative error. And percentage error is now very easy to find. What is the percentage error? Just multiply this by 100. That's all. So what is the percentage error? This into 100. So plus minus 0.1%. We can also express the final result as a percentage error. So A becomes, what is the mean value? 2.626 centimeter. And how much is the percentage error? Plus minus 0.1 percent. So in this video, we have learnt about errors. We have learnt about the mean value of a reading, absolute errors in each readings, the mean absolute error, the fractional error and the percentage error. Next video we are going to learn about combination of errors, how to handle errors when adding readings, subtracting readings, multiplying readings, divided readings. Thank you.